Adversity, bring it. The struggle, I welcome. Snooze on life, never know. I am Dave Regina, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back, No Snooze Podcast, episode 184. As always, I'm in the booth with a familiar three. We have Diamandia, the boss, Lingos, Claudio, the voice, Valenzuela, and I am Dave, the body, Regina. When did that nickname come about? I made it myself, actually. <laughs> Uh, oh, what do you think? Somebody gave this to me? What's wrong with you? So <laughs> Diamandia needs absolutely no intro to the No News podcast. She's an international TEDx speaker, former VP of the UFC, founder of the wellness brand Diamandia. She's a real estate investor. She's overcome serious life trauma to dominate her own future. She's a visionary, a creator, a leader somebody who I'm so grateful for and somebody who I really value and seek a ton of mentorship from. So Diamandia, the last time that you came on the podcast was I believe back in like October. Yahoo covered a story on us. It's one of our most downloaded shows to date. So it's only right that we run it back for round two. Without further ado, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you for having me. Hello. She's back. <laughs> she back. is back. Um, so yeah, we had some great conversations off air. Um, you guys should have been there, but we didn't hit record. So <laughs> uh, Diamandia also, also spoke at our Action Cultivates Excellence event, the first ever. Yes. Can you give a little insight in that from a female perspective, what your, and, and be honest here, because we didn't even talk about that, right? You said, right. oh, it was a great event, but we didn't like go in depth about it. Don't, don't, don't batter us too bad here. But what was your perspective as a female going in um, and just seeing all those men interact the way that, that, that you did see it? Well, I came, I was a last speaker. Uh, and I think that's really relevant to the experience. Like I saw you guys kind of like in the muck, mm -hmm. right? Like you go into something like that, you're break down, you have a breakdown to break through, right? Yep. Every kind of experience is like that. So I was catching you on like the last day of like intense work. Yes. Right. So I felt like everyone was a very receptive because a lot of walls were down and I could definitely feel that there was a lot of timid energy going on with with the group in general just mm. because of where they were in their emotional kind of journey, let's say it. Um, very receptive, very engaged. I felt like I came in at just the right time. I think any sooner, I probably would not have been received what from what I was saying because we mm -hmm. talked about a lot of stuff. Yeah, we, we talked a, about a wide range of things. And I think, you know, talking to any group of men about meditation, there's all there's immediate blocks, right? And I feel like every single person in general, there's immediate blocks, mm -hmm. right? Let yep. alone men are much more resistant to it. Um, and so I felt like it was just the right time that I came in to talk about this stuff. And you guys had already seen like Joe Girardi and there was a lot of impact already happening. You guys had a sound bath and I think it was just a really great time. And I, being friends with you, being friends with Sean, I could feel and see what you guys were going through, holding mm -hmm. that type of event for the first time, yes. holding that space, seeing yourself like seeing like your alignment with your purpose happening in real time. Mm -hmm. I think that was probably the most impactful for me because I could see you guys like fighting in the fact that this was actually what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. And you're doing it. And then you're seeing the impact happen in a collective group of men around you who are then responding to you and telling you how much you've impacted them. And you know, this kind of experience stepping out into like this type of leadership is really hard because you face everything within yourself about what's holding you back, like imposter syndrome, like um, everything, every excuse that you can come up with that prevents you from stepping out in the space. But for to watch you two have this relationship with the both of you and see you str still struggling yes. and then fighting it from the positive of the side of the struggle. It was so beautiful. 
And I'm so grateful that I was able to just witness that alone. Um, that like I like started crying when I like just felt the shift of energy within the both of you. We hadn't even talked. You guys didn't even say anything to me. No. And then you both were like, I haven't slept in three days. I <laughs> and I was like, I know. I can feel yeah. it in, in both of you and like how much shifting was happening within you. It was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much. And we're so grateful for you. You know that. Um, and, you know, you're one of the very few people in my life that I actually like really listen to and <laughs> seek mentorship from, you. you know, like I, I, I think it takes people a long time to find their, their true mentors. And I've been so grateful to find you and Vincent Maselli, who also spoke at the event, um, who have been just so, you know, receptive to, to myself and Sean, but really just wanting, wanting to help too. Um, so couldn't be, you know, any more grateful for you. I guess I want to talk about that real quick. You said the feedback, right? Which we know was incredible. That that to us was the most impactful thing ever. Like, and then also hearing you give us that feedback, it's great. But from the attendees that came, that feeling was was I was high. I was literally high on life. You know, people are text messaging. They were driving away, voice noting us. Yes. You know, like we let you listen to some of the stuff that came in, um, and it was just a, a crazy feeling. But I really do struggle with compliments. And like receiving like positive feedback like yes, that so on bad. every level though. Yeah, I get it. Is there any tactic that I can apply or anybody can apply when it comes to that? Because you don't want to seem like a. I felt the feeling, but I struggle with like, oh my god, thank you so. Much. Like I struggle with that. Right. Is there anything yes. that you have that can I don't know? You're help talking me out to a the girl. Bit? It took me 38 years to receive a compliment. <laughs> 38 years. Like I would dismiss. I would like play small or like oh anyone could do that or just listening to the intro of you right now do like introduce my bio I'm like oh god like I can't even I did all of those things mm -hmm. but yet I still can't handle hearing that yep. because it's too much like I think seeing like instead of thinking of it in a way of like like thank you like I receive that yes like instead of this is a compliment no 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 like I'm receiving what you're saying. It kind of like changes the narrative in your brain about like now I'm now I have to be this person that they think that I am, which mm -hmm. I think is what why we can't really receive that. Like because I'm not really that person. And like, what if I like we go through this like, oh, now I'm this person that I have to pretend to be and I'm already pretending to be this person because I have imposter syndrome. And I, I, you know, and then that's what's the narrative that our, our self-worth is happening, I think, in the background. And if you change it to like. I receive that. Like, I think that's just like a little tiny way. Yeah. I, I've heard I've like, heard that too from from like um, you know, Ed Milet, Tony Robbins. That's something yeah. that they say a lot. Um, and I think I I think I struggle depending on who's giving the compliment. Because if I say I receive that to somebody who doesn't not really emotionally intelligent, they might be like, What are you saying? Right. You, you know what I mean? Yeah, like but the it's caliber not about of them. I know, I know. It's about you. Yes. And like this is your experience. It's your impact that you're mm -hmm. creating in other people. And so like you have to do what you need to do. Like it doesn't matter if that person understands what you're saying. Right. You have to understand and receive it. And I think for you guys, it's really important right now, especially right now, to take all of those voice notes and all of those messages and screenshot them or and put those voice notes in a like album in your phone and label the album like something. Right. Like, I need to see this. That's the name of the album. I need to see this. And every time that you have imposter syndrome or there is a question where you're starting to be like, why am I doing this? I can't do this. Mm -hmm. I'm a fake. Like, whatever that narrative is, you open up that folder and you go look at every single one of those responses from those people and you listen to those voice notes and you will, like, get yourself out of your own shit so much faster because you realize it's not about you. And that imposter or that thing that's holding you back, that's preventing you from creating this impact with other people gets really small and stupid because you're like, I'm really going to let my fear of being judged get in the way of this human being changing their life. Mm. This human being, mm -hmm. when it's not about you anymore, when it's about your family, when it's about the people that you impact around you, it's easier for us to get out of our own way. 
because we minimize our own shit, right? We minimize our own things and we are much more focused on others. Yes. And this is about service. This is about helping as many people as possible, right? That's what my alignment is. Like I'm here, I'm on this podcast because I want to make an impact. I'm an introvert. <laughs> so yeah, that's crazy. I prefer to be alone, not on social media. Like I spend not, half naked. not naked, <laughs> right? And think about that. I have severe body dysmorphia and like extreme eating issues my entire life, right? I was 200 pounds at one point in my life. Like for me to be putting out photos in a G string or a bikini, like the amount of work that I've had to do on myself to put that out there and then receive what comes back in. Both good and bad. Both good. And will the bad is like where the real work happens. Right, right. right. Because people don't know me. They're just now coming into my sphere. They're just like, you don't know my backstory. You don't know mm. why I created the, the gua sha. You don't know about the health issues. You're just seeing me dancing around in a bikini. Mm. Right. Thinking that. I think I'm the shit, Life right? Is good. Right, like everything's perfect. I'm full of myself and I'm doing this so that everyone pay, will pay attention to me, mm -hmm. which is not the case in any way, shape or form. I'm doing that so people can feel empowered about doing the same thing and take full ownership of themselves and not dim their light and not play small and show up fully as who they are and put that out there into the world to help other people. Yeah. You do a hell of a job with that too. Thank you. Um, like you were mentioning with the with the bio, how do you stay so locked in when you're achieving all these goals? Right, you set a goal, you go achieve it. You know, you got into real estate, you're doing massive, massive deals there. Then you create this brand, you're selling thousands of units, hundreds of hundreds, thousands, thousands. of units a month. Yeah, yeah, like crazy. How do you not stop, and how do you just stay so locked in? And I do stop. You do. Yeah. And that's the hardest part for me is that I have to shut this down. Like this weekend, like I shut my phone off from Friday night at like 9 p.m. Well, I didn't shut it all the way off. There were like two people that could get me if they needed to. And I laid in bed until Monday morning. I did not move. I got up. I did 15 minutes of my Pilates that I do every day. I, saw that. I did my meditation, which was in my bed. And then I ate some food and I got back in my bed. Like I have to shut it down because I will burn out and then I can't show up for all of the people that I need to show up for. I really struggle with that. Yes. I really do, honestly. And I, and then I'm starting to feel it in my body. And I think of you every time. I'm like, oh, the inflammation or like, <laughs> oh, my back. Like, you know, and I'm like, oh, my God, I know she would just tell me to, like, relax. Yeah. But it's it's. It's hard enough for me to quiet my brain, and then it's even harder for me to quiet my body because I feel like I have to move my body to reignite and re-inspire my brain daily. You know, yeah. I battle a lot of shit every day, just like mm -hmm. everybody else does. Um, so it's so so challenging for me. I read this this great. Wait, before we go ahead. like yeah. go ahead, I want to speak to that especially yes. because I think a lot of people do what you're talking about. And it's really important to exercise to calm the mind. Mm -hmm. But I highly recommend that using other techniques as well as exercise to focus on doing what exercise does for you as a practice is really important. Elaborate. Meditation. Yeah. The mm. word of the today. Word. Yeah. The word of today. Ugh. It's the hardest thing I'm telling you is the hardest thing. It's the thing that I resisted the longest five years of resistance and it's made the biggest impact in my life. And now I can't even believe that I don't shut up about it and that I even talk about it in general. And I could not do the real estate deals that we're talking about. I couldn't do this brand. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do anything external if I did not meditate. Yeah, so I was telling you off air, um, you know, my my partner is a huge meditator. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she tells me every day, you know, you need to you need to sit down and meditate. Like she sees daily the spiral. What I'm like, what I go through, you know, my the battles. And she's like, You're right right there. But all you need to do is meditate. Like that will shift everything. everything. So here we are on vacation in Curacao. And I'm like, you know what? 
I want to meditate. <laughs> not because you tell me that I want to yeah, meditate. Yeah, no, it definitely has nothing to do with I want to meditate. But every time she says it, I think of you too. And I'm like, oh my God, here you go. You got Diamandia, you got Katie, the two strong, powerful women in my life telling me the same shit. So like, how long am I going to resist this? For? Right. So I did it two or three times on vacation out of the five days that we were there. And I told you upstairs, it almost felt fake because I did the 15 minute Joe Dispenza, um, which was phenomenal. And I really locked in and my intention was set for these 15 minutes. But I did catch myself a couple of times, like wanting to open my eye, like doing that, the yeah. battle. But the clarity that I received, um, you know, this was a uh, more of looking into the future mindset of of your feelings. And there were times where the sun would just open up. When he's telling you to, you know, to feel your future and and what is it that you're feeling? And I literally said to myself, wow, my name is Dave Regina, but I have the impact for this generation like an Ed Milet. Like, and I was going through those motions and, and the thoughts that were coming to me were really like, it was so natural though. I'm like, wow, I'm really supposed to be here. Like I, I told you, I know what I was eating backstage. Like the chicken cutlet was amazing. I was hugging this gentleman who traveled from across the world to come visit me. I couldn't even speak his language. He was crying on my shoulder mm -hmm. and I was kind of pissed because it was a white shirt and he got some sh schmutz <laughs> on it. Like I, it was so, it was really that yeah. clear. And so I said this to her and she's like, yeah, like that's what this does. And she's like, imagine if you do this consistently. That was yeah. just the first time. Right. Now you started, we're, we're similar in a space where we like routine. You recommend doing the same one when you're first starting out or yes. do you recommend jumping all over the place? I recommend the same one every day and just making it like I, for a very long time, I'm not like as rigid as I used to be, but I am s still similarly rigid just with a little bit more flexibility. Mm -hmm. Like, I had to have it like this. Like, if you look in my phone, there is, like, a time that's, like, wake up and meditation and workout. Do I ever hit the time frames that those things are in my phone? Not once. <laughs> Not once have I hit it at 5 o'clock and 6.30. But they get done at some point. And so I have to do it, like, every single day like this or it doesn't get done. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how I am. And yep. you're very similar. Yes. But... I chose the same meditation and what I found, it was alignment, anchoring and align. Okay. Anchoring. Anchoring Explain and align. Explain anchoring. Grounding. Grounding. Like actual grounding? Like, or like grounding physically, yourself? Like physically, like mentally and physically grounding in your own body. So not feet on the floor. Your like, feet are, can be on the floor. But you're not talking stuff. about grounding in a sense of like being outside and like feeling the no. earth. No. Okay. But grounding outside, feeling the earth is the same thing Concept. that you're doing while in like a meditation gotcha. and aligning to your like your purpose your future version of yourself without saying the future version of yourself like mm -hmm. Dispenza said in that meditation for you so if you think about like those two years were the two years I came back from Peru first ayahuasca ceremony first podcast went live my life blew up I wasn't ready for all of this mm -hmm. or I thought I wasn't ready I had imposter syndrome, like I wanted to hide, you know, and here I am like viral. <laughs> There's no hiding when you're viral. Um, you know, 450 DMs one day. I had 450 followers and a little 450 DMs. And then the next day I was at 10,000. It was like life blew up and this is what happened. So I focused on alignment and anchoring. And what I was doing is I was teaching myself to be focused on who I wanted to become, what I wanted in my life, what was my priority, who I wanted to be as a human, like how I wanted to impact other people, like how I wanted people to remember me, like... And then I just became it because I spent 15 minutes a day intentionally thinking about the person that I wanted to be. And then I just did it. Is there a, and humor me here, mm -hmm. what's the minimum amount of time that I have to commit to daily? <laughs> like 15 minutes? I, yes. I, I'm not being funny. Just do 15 no, it's minutes. long. It's long. It's like not. I can't get away with seven my or 10. My answer is going to be 45. No, no, no. Because no, no. you're going to just say no. Because my response to that is like, if 15 minutes is too long, you should be sitting for 30. <sighs> right? Because what is my MO if, 
if something's triggering you, that's the thing you have to lean into, right? Mm. You know this about me. Yeah. If something makes you want to throw Mom, up, man, you, gotta you do have it. to do nah. it, right? My like so if if you are resisting 15, sit for 30. Oh god, yeah, Then if yeah. you are like, I can't all right, even fathom. I'll do the 15. Okay. okay. All right, all right. It's, but you fine. can't fathom 15. If you think about it from 30, 15 will seem like a breeze. Yes. And right? and I will say this. It was, I was getting antsy, but I was able to get through the 15. Yeah. So I can, I can actually do and that. And your body is learning to sit still. You are a physical, active human yes. being who process their emotions in physical action. That's what right. your body has been trained. Your mind and body have been trained to be together with the export of energy in your body to train your mind. And you're doing the fucking opposite. Right. Okay. So you're taking all the years. How old are you? 34. 34 years of training and you're turning that 180 degrees and yeah. doing the polar opposite. So your body of all of us, your body, my body was like, absolutely not. Like twitching, sitting, couldn't sit still, <laughs> had to lay down, had to get up, like could not get this shit together. Like, cause I wanted to be active in that mm -hmm. moment where I was doing the opposite of that. Fine. Okay. Sold. <laughs> um, <laughs> Are you looking to elevate your brand with captivating visuals and immersive sound? Look no further than the home of the No Snooze podcast, Kai Visions Productions, your go-to destination for cutting-edge audio and video production. At Kai Visions, we don't just create content. We create experiences that leave a lasting impact. From podcasts, YouTube variety shows, sleek corporate videos, to attention-grabbing promotional campaigns, our team of experts is dedicated to turning your vision into reality. Choose Kai Visions for a production experience like no other. It's time to make your brand known. Contact us today at kaivisions at gmail.com or find us on Instagram at Kai Visions. Kai Visions Productions, where audiovisual excellence meets innovation. Now, back to the epi. Something that I, I'm working on is, and we kind of touched on it briefly, but I want to have a little bit more compassion and, and care for myself. This is something I think that you do extremely well. I need tips. Okay. <laughs> Seriously. Like, what, what can I do to be a little bit more mindful of giving myself grace? I, I feel at times I'm always, like, I can't, I just can't stop, you know? And, and like, I do deserve... A like I, I loved vacation. It was mm -hmm. freaking amazing. But from the second that I landed, I had two podcasts lined up that day, right? Literally, the mm -hmm. second I landed, headed to two podcasts, go pick up my daughter, bring her to swim, back home, cooking dinner, have to unpack my stuff. It just, it didn't stop. So it was right back into it. And it's been like that, obviously, ever since. Mm -hmm. Any tips for me? I or mean, anybody you're who's like, this is your choice. Mm-hmm. So, like, what would happen if those two podcasts happened the week after? Nothing. Nothing would happen. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, we play the game of should have. Like, I should be doing this. You could you could be doing that. Yeah. You don't have to be doing it. No, that. and I love it, too. You do, I but, do. like, you're not giving yourself the actual space to take time for yourself. Like, what if that was part of your calendar? Yes. My my counter to that is I feel, <laughs> you're going to laugh, but it's like, I'll rest when. Right. When what? You have shingles 45 times? <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. Right. Like, I'm just going to keep going and going, and then Until I'll be able to rest at some point. you burn yourself out so bad. You break a leg. You pull a muscle. You actually can't work out. All right. Yeah. So, like, you can choose, like, your if and we, you talked a little about, like, your body's talking to you now, mm. right? You're starting to get a, a little bit more in tune with your body's responding to yep. saying, like, sit the fuck down, right? Yes. So, like, you can listen to that now. You can choose to give yourself the time to recover. You can choose to, and there are tools to, like, especially with physical recovery, like, I highly recommend WHOOP. I highly recommend using a data, <sighs> using data. Get anxiety thinking about it. But like if I, it had helped me so much because I was superhuman. I could do anything. I could run. I could, didn't have to sleep. I could put more on my plate. Like he put it on there. Like I can keep going. Like until I started seeing the data, like I can't control the data. Mm -hmm. Like I can dismiss the data, 
But even then, if you go and do the research on the data, I'm making up stories. So when you have something third party and you see the numbers and it comes in in a color format and I'm red for an entire week, like it's me. Mm. <laughs> like this is this is my choice. So having a third situation, I think that would help a little bit too. And like you can make the decision to take to listen to your body and give yourself the time to recover and not beat yourself up about it and look at it from a perspective of I need to do this so I can be the best version of myself tomorrow. There's nothing wrong with taking a break right now. There, I can show up 100%, 150% when I'm at 150%. And if I'm showing up at 25%, everyone's going to feel the impact of me being shitty, right? You know what's so funny about that? I have the perfect example that I'm like, it's like an aha moment for me. One of the biggest challenges of my previous separation over the past two years mm -hmm. was the fear of not having my daughter all the time. Right. And as a father who's heavily involved, as you know, yep. um, I live, breathe, like my daughter's everything. But I had to get to a space to where, you know, me and her mother decided on 50-50 split, which was a, a very fortunate, um, great co-parenting situation. But that was the first time, because at first it sucked. And I would sit in my house lonely, and then my dog died, and it's just like me in this house that, you know, was completely different. Right. But I saw that being away from the thing that I loved the most allowed me to recharge and regroup and set the intention for the second that I then got her. Mm -hmm. So when I don't see her for a day, that next day, my patience is through the roof, my calmness, my stoicism, like everything is really at 100. And it's the perfect example for that because if I could do that with my daughter and now I see like... The second that, you know, I go pick her up from school, I'm just so locked in until the second that I drop her off because right. I really value that time. But I also know that it's okay to be away from her now. But it's, so it's about like, why don't her. I do that to my body? But it's but you just have to really tell yourself, like, in order for me to be the best father, yes, to be the best version of myself, I can be the best father that I can be. I have to, therefore, right. take care of myself. Mm. If I'm gonna show up as the best dad the best husband, the best whatever it is, the external, mm -hmm. I have to fill myself up at 100% so I can pour from a full cup, right? Make it about somebody else, right? And and that's, you really want to be a great dad. And like, there are people that aren't fathers that like, how are you impacting? Like, I want to be the best at X, Y, and Z. I have to be the best version of me in order to show up. Right. There's nothing selfish about taking 15 to 20 minutes to do a meditation or 15 to 20 minutes to do a workout. Like there's an hour a day focused on only you can make you the best version of yourself to be able to impact everybody around you in a positive way. There's three things that I know in my life that I should be doing that come up could, consistently. You could be doing. No, no, no. That I like really should be and could be. Could be. To significantly improve my quality of life. And it's getting some sort of data tracker, like the Whoop. I've spoken about that many times here. Mm -hmm. So that's one. Reading my Bible, that's two. Mm -hmm. And then the third one. Meditation. Um, meditation. <laughs> I, I forgot. I forgot. You see? <laughs> um, seriously, those are yeah. three, like, w what am I doing? Why not? I got I to gotta do these. How bad do you want to feel good? I know. And those are significant things. Yeah. And that's probably 20 minutes right there. But the life. whoop you got a—that's a watch, or it's a because no, I'm not taking like the rollie off. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> it's a strap. Oh, so you put it on the other side. I just put it on, and then I don't—I oh, okay. don't touch this. I shower with it on. Oh, you do? Yeah, I like slide. There's a like a thing that you slide on top to charge it, so you never have to take it off. I'll like wash it every once in a while. Yeah, it's yeah. gross, but like I'm gonna have crazy tan lines. It, I have crazy tan yeah, lines. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, but and, it's worth it. And it's so now, it. how long did it take for you to adjust? Because my, and it's funny, I was beating the CV up because, you know, sometimes I tell him he doesn't want to see the feedback and he doesn't want to get on the yeah. scale or whatever. But that's literally me with that. I don't want to see the sleep debt because I'm like, I know it's going to be that bad. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't want to look at that because it's going to make me more anxious and then I'm going to sleep even worse. And how long did it take you to, to adjust to it? Like real? Yes. Years. Oh, fuck. I'm stubborn. I'm so fucking stubborn, you know? and. Um, 
I need to see it all the time. Like, I can't tell you how many times I've had to see things in order for me to get it. Like, I know, yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know, but I still have to see it. And I even remember having like breakthrough moments in like some leadership programs where I was laying on the floor in my apartment crying, saying, how many more times do you have to see this in order for you to understand that this is your purpose, right? right? So like, I got to see the shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, and oh, like it takes a everything. while. It takes a while for you to just let go of your limiting beliefs mm -hmm. and like surrender into what you're what you could be doing to be the best version of you because we're usually holding ourselves back because we're afraid of actually succeeding because mm. like what if you did be actually become ed my let i'm going to become <laughs> but like, not not ed my let and honestly sorry ed um uh, we love we'll, you ed. we will be doing some work together but um yeah i'm a little bit more youthful a little bigger Probably a little stronger. <laughs> now you're talking shit. <laughs> we got to play this clip, CV, when we when I get on stage with with Tag him in it. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. So something I am doing though, since the beginning of the year, is being mindful of my alcohol in intake. Yeah. Put it all the way to zero. This How now I think I'm at like 85 or 86 days. Um. And shout out to this app. Let me see what it's called. I think it's called Quit Drinking. To be honest with you. Um. Don't know what I'm really committing to here, but. It says you've been alcohol free for 86 days, 12 hours, 48 minutes, and now 53 seconds, right? And it's, um, I don't know if you can see that, CV. Can you see? I don't know if it, put it in front of my, oh, whoops, sorry. Well, anyway, it gives you um, your progress and talks about money saved. I got to read it first, CV. Talks about money saved, um, the goals that you've completed, gives you the streak, and then also it says remember why you quit. And my purpose here is to live in alignment and become the most disciplined and undeniable version of myself as a father, businessman, partner, and motivator. And I look at this freaking thing every single day. Um, so there you go. In front of my face, CB. <laughs> now in front. There you go. Camera one, camera two. There you go. Um, so yeah, it's a great freaking app, but I'm starting to really feel the benefits of it and the clarity that's coming behind it. Um, I've never gone this long ever in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, you drink? Not anymore. Why? I bought a piece of real estate that like scared the shit out of me. Like it's the biggest deal I had. I once I signed like the ink on that. Like I signed the purchase and sales agreement, and I like I had like this moment. Where I was like, I need every brain cell. <laughs> Like I need every brain cell to be fired and working because it was the largest amount of money that I was responsible for. And I just like didn't want to feel like foggy mm -hmm. or like I couldn't be hung over. I didn't have like the bandwidth. It, shit just got really real. And I was like, OK, like we're just not going to drink or like, you know, smoke any weed or anything for like like 30 days, you know, and kind of see how that felt. And I had done like 60 days before I went to Peru because when you do ayahuasca, like you can't have any drugs. Like so in like your system? in your system. So I had done it before and I felt really good. And I, when I came back, I did a 60 after that. And so I like knew how, how I could vibrate, let's yep. just say. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, like dialed in. And then it just keep, it just kept going. And I was like, I feel really good. Like I was doubling down at the same time with my meditation practice. So yeah. This was December, like the end of November last year, not last year, the year before. And then I went to Joe Dispenza in January, the 21st of January, and I sat in like some serious meditation and I shot out of a rocket. When I came back, this got launched and I wasn't drinking the whole time. And so I was like flying what felt like I can't, ex mm -hmm. like Joe Dispenza was just like life changing just to keep it light. Um, How many people attended that event? 2,000. 2,000. And yeah. he led a meditation? He led many meditations. How how long is this It event? was seven days. Seven days? Wow. It, I can't wait to do it again. When are you doing that? I don't know. Let me know. Okay. Seriously. Okay. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to commit, but let me know. You have to, you have to commit. <laughs> <laughs> let me know. Let me know about it. Like, he goes, his events go... Like they turn on, and by the time you fill out the form to join, it's already filled it's up. It's done. Yeah. So oh. like, I have been trying to get into one of his for eight months, and I didn't know why. Like I had no reason. I, I 
read his book like three or f- I read his book right before I did the podcast with Sean for the first time. And I was like, this guy's got some points. Like, he's making sense. Mm -hmm. Like, what he was writing about was becoming supernatural. And I was like, this, all of this, I I, I get it. I get it. This guy knows his things. You felt it. I felt it. And then I put the book down, and that was the end of that. Mm. And then fast forward, like, four or five years later, I was like, I feel like it's time. I feel like I need to go to a Joe Dispenza thing. No idea why. And then started trying to get on in the States, I couldn't get into any event in the States. And then Cartagena popped up and I just got in. It was like the timing had all just kind of aligned, which is so Joe Dispenza to say, but it very much, everything kind of clicked in. And and then that like pushed me into another universe. Um, It was fucking life changing. And I, the third day I wanted to leave because I was like, this is just st- too stupid. But then you locked back in? Yeah, because I'm a resistor. Like, I like the data all made sense, the science all made sense, but I was like, I'm kind of over it. Like, mm-hmm. I get it, I get it. And then, as soon as I like did my full resistance of like, maybe I could leave, you know, like had that thought. That's when like everything Breakers. unlocked, like completely unlocked, and like mm-hmm. came out of my body and had some crazy experiences with meditation. That's a great life lesson right there. Yep. Um. I actually read something and I thought about you and it was just um, a thing on Instagram and we had connected a couple of weeks back to set this date. So I saw it within that time frame, and I jotted it down. It says nine things in life that hold great power, rest, so kindness, <laughs> meditation, vulnerability, healing yourself, honesty with others, embracing lifelong growth, fostering deep connections, Giving without wanting. Those are the nine like main things that hold really great power. Out of those nine things, I suck at rest, <laughs> suck at meditation. I'm vulnerable, healing myself. I'm honest with others. I'm embracing lifelong growth, fostering deep connections like this, and giving without wanting. I could be better. So there's one, two, three. There's four things on there that I need to like improve on, and I feel like you do all these things really well. Thank what you. do you what do you struggle with on this list? All of them. You do? Of course. But you do them all. Yes. Yeah, I do. And what's by far the most important? Rest, kindness, meditation, vulnerability. All of them are equally as important. Really? Yeah, but you think I that's think a good it, list. Like is this that about? is so spot on. Uh, that is so spot on. Hmm. And thank you for that. I received that. Good practice right there, mm-hmm. Diamond. Um, but is it meditation number one? I I think they're all equal, equally important. And I didn't realize, like, I think it all starts with you. So, like, you have to do rest and meditation, like, are the same. Oh, and I in the those same. Are the two I suck at. And, like, terrible. I, I know, I am, and I completely understand and I get it, <sighs> like, how hard it is. Yeah. I understand how hard it is. Cause, like, our value is usually entangled in, like, how much we're giving to others. Mm-hmm. And just go. Like, yeah. I'm a fucking winner, I'm a killer. Right, but I compete with anybody. Right, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then I get fired up like this, and then I'm like, I'm gonna let's go. Let me do one more lead. Let me book one more podcast. Let me go work out again. Like, let me do this. But you're talking about doing. I I know you're talking about the physical act of doing. Right, and like what you're gonna learn this year in this meditation practice that you're taking on. (laughs) Can I commit for January? (laughs) No, I'm up your ass. I know. I need to start. Um, Ah is those things will happen without you having to do them the more still that you become with yourself like i can't ex- like i can give a great analogy with like raising capital for mm-hmm. this deal that i had give right me, give me i had to raise 2 million dollars i had never done a capital raise before in my life when i heard that i wanted to throw up i was like immediately like who do i have to call like I have to do, I have to call. I have to call a hundred people. Like I got, I got to reach out to my network. I got to like connect with people. I got to like, I got to do, right? I'm immediately thinking like, I got to do all these things in order for this money to, for people to give me the money. Okay. And that wasn't the case in any way, shape or form. I randomly like out of, I had gone on a, <laughs> I had gone on a Bumble date. Okay, (laughs) with someone eight months before, like I was in this moment and he randomly like gave me a call after 
like we hadn't seen each other. We went on one date. He was like going through some divorce stuff. Like no, no hard feelings. Like I knew where he was emotionally. So hadn't talked to him in eight months. Randomly calls me. He's like, what are you doing? Like, I know you're doing something. And I'm like, I'm, you know, I just signed a real estate deal. I have been working on this, that, and the other thing. And he's like, do you want to have lunch on Sunday? So he shows up on Sunday. He walks to the door. He sits down. He goes, I've been thinking I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you this money for the for the real estate deal. He gave me a quarter of my raise. And then he hired me as a coach by the end of the day. And like nowhere, the money walked through the goddamn door is the point, yeah, right? Yeah. Here I am thinking that I had to call all these people and hustle and pitch and, and do all this shit when I just had to embody it. He called me, he asked me what I was doing. And I said, I, doing this deal. I've got this development project going on. I'm doing this. I'm speaking here. Like I just was who I was. I embodied my future self, the person that I had been working on for two years in meditation. Mm -hmm. I just was that person. And he was like, yup. I didn't have, to, I didn't ask him for any money. I didn't ask him to. Did you even know that he had that no. money? No. I didn't know he had the money. I didn't ask him for the money. I just said I what I was doing. To this guy. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, so what would you say to the people? What would you say to the people who would be like, oh, my network's not like that? Right. That's the excuse I get. It yeah. was a fucking bumble date. So get on bumble. There was the not, <laughs> there was no, this wasn't anyone that you would think was in my Rolodex. Right. This wasn't someone I worked with at the UFC. This wasn't like this guy that everybody has these preconceived notions, right? This was someone I had gone out with one time who I didn't know had this money. Mm. Yeah, that's And this was a too. lot of money yeah. too. This was But not... you don't think there was another motive there? Like no, for the doubters he... who were like, well, maybe he wants to be with you. And he's No, like... he was dating somebody else. Wow. So he was just like coming. Like... He was just like, what are you doing? He needed something inside of him. Like he was stuck in his process. And then he hired me as a coach. And I coached him. Like that was it. Like there was not, there was nothing romantic on the table. Mm. Like homeboy wasn't trying to fuck me. Like essentially, <laughs> right? Like there was, it was completely off the table, and like that was very clear, because I was like, this is not. And he was like, no, no, no. Like okay, so like it is about embodying the person that you want to become and taking full fucking ownership of it unapologetically, mm. and letting yourself be seen. I could have. Made that conversation sound so different. I oh, I got something going on over here. Like I could have played downplayed everything, but uh, I was like, no. Point. I didn't even think about that. I'm developing 35 homes into X, Y, and Z. I'm doing this. Like I've been working on this for two years. Like I fully took ownership of it instead of being like, oh no, like I didn't really go to mm. yeah. Like playing, dumbing myself down, like dimming my light. I just like this is what I'm doing. And he was like, oh, but, you know, here you go. Here's a check. And then it happened again. Like, I, <laughs> I like, cried about this because I was thinking to myself about how I had to do all the shit. It walked through the fucking door. And like, what do you mean it happened again? Twice? I, yeah. I, like, was at a workout one, one day. And so I was like, what are you doing? Some dude's like, I want to give you 200K for, you know. He just came to your gym and gave you two hundred. No, years. somebody else that I like had a relationship with for a very long time. Like he was like, "What are you working on right now?" And I'm like, "I just did the thing." And he was like, "Okay." I come back a week later to my workout, and he's like, "I got a hundred k for you." Oh god! And I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> like, this is manifestation. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is alignment. This is I could have fucked that conversation up too. I never ever asked anybody for any money. Is my point. I never said, would you like to invest? Never did that come out of my mouth. This, These people said, you have it in the brain. I trust you. You have it. Here you go. Mm. You have quoted on the back of your Diamandia Gua Sha. You get in life what you have the courage to ask for. Yes. Now, is that both to yourself and people? Like, because if you, the way I'm taking that quote too, like it can mean two different things. Like you could have screwed up those conversations and not really said what it is that you're doing, even though you didn't really say, hey, listen, I need this money. Or you can also just be transparent about what it is that you need. What is that quote? Why that quote on that uh, brand? 
Because you get in life what you have the courage to ask for within yourself. And anything is possible in this world. Like, you can be Ed Milet. You can be whatever you want in this life if you ask the universe for it. But you have to ask the universe for it. And, like, that's what that means. Like, never did I ever think this was ever going to happen. But I asked for it. And then I had to follow through with dealing with all of the things that were preventing me from accomplishing it within and belief, myself. And belief, right? Yeah, which I is think my that's belief. a big thing too. Like even with the um the personal professional development stuff we're doing now with with Sean and I through Ace, I see a lot of people like I, I asked guys yesterday, we gave everybody a minute to do their introduction and then we spoke about goals. And there was one guy who was kind of stumbling around and, and fumbling because he, he was just stepping into the space, which we really appreciate. Some mm -hmm. uh, guy just coming out and being vulnerable and saying, ah, I don't really know. And I said, what do you want? He said, I don't know. And I think a lot of people have that. Yeah. You know, where they struggle with really believing and knowing that they can achieve X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. You know? Um we have YouTube. Like anyone yeah, can literally do anything. anything. Like yes. any do I did I know how to launch an e-commerce store? No. Like but not you, I, that's hard to hear I though YouTube because you're, it. you're so here. So like so but I'm, you are, I'm, I'm gesturing by up. Your perception of me, I'm here. Well, no, all the factual. Like don't don't dim your light, Diamond. I'm not, but like all the things that you've done are are very high level things. Um, I know it's been a journey to get there. The the trauma that you've overcome to now utilize as fuel to light your fire is mm -hmm. is, is a, an incredible thing in itself. A lot of people would have folded and died, uh, whereas you've done the opposite. So you you really are at that level and you continue to go up. Right. That but I'll hang the drywall. You know what I mean? Like I when it, it comes to real estate investing, like I bought the Home Depot 123 book, guys. Like that's how I started. I like lost my shirt twice in real estate. There's a potential that I'm going to lose it even more. Like I'm rolling the dice, you know, and that's really all you got to do is roll the dice. You can figure it out. And we have so much access. Like it's the fact that like I will go and do the research. Like I know that I'm not the best at like let's use hanging drywall. Like I needed the book. I needed to actually call my friend and be like, do you know how to hang drywall? You're actually hanging drywall? I, I hung drywall. Like the first house I bought you was a that? single family home that I flipped into a two family. Okay. I didn't know how to use a drill when I bought that house. By the end of it, I hung every piece of drywall in there, including the ceilings by myself. Wow. Two ladders and two dummies. Did I know how to make a dummy? No. Like my ex-boyfriend at the time did. And like he taught me how to do it. And then I just did it. Like I broke many pieces over my head. You know what I mean? Like I was willing to fail. Like I'm willing to fail. I'm willing to like just do it, you know? And like that's what I think I have. That, that I think that's what I have is that I'm willing to eat shit. You know, like I'm willing to roll the dice, you know, and I will pick because I know given my circumstances of trauma that like I can't really be broken like I've gotten close right. and I know what that looks like and I know how to get out of that so much faster now that like why not me why not me like why not you why not you why not us mm -hmm. there are people out there like Will Smith is just like you and I guys like we all put our pants on one leg at a fucking time. He does a lot of meditation There's, work. And he's done ayahuasca like so much. Yeah, he works very closely with Jay Shetty. Yeah. So like we're the same as everybody else. We can do whatever we want in this world. We mm -hmm. just have to try. I mean, I feel bad for the people who are living in that house because half their walls are probably backwards. <laughs> no, but we you know, we won't we won't let them know that. They were. Uh, <laughs> you I did hang like do rock the bathroom drywall in the living room and then we had to take it down and then you had to take it down yeah, <laughs> yeah poor, but poor that people. was my only mistake um <laughs> this episode is brought to you by hudson valley teeth whitening hudson valley teeth whitening is an experienced teeth whitening salon where you can get up to seven shades lighter with just a 60 or 90 minute session in a professional and relaxing setting they offer the most superior product coupled with the highest quality of customer service available to get you instant results whether you have an important event to attend, such as a wedding, birthday, anniversary, interview, 
or you are just unhappy with the color of your teeth, this LED light technology helps whiten your teeth fast and easy. At Hudson Valley Teeth Whitening, they understand how important your smile is to you. And speaking from personal experience, you'll be guided by highly efficient staff in a relaxing environment to reach your desired shade. Let them know you're a friend of Dave's from the No Snooze podcast and connect with them at HudsonValleyTeethWhitening.com or on Instagram at HV Teeth Whitening. Now, back to the epi. We spoke before about behaviors upstairs mm-hmm. and how behaviors are the hardest things to change, especially behaviors in adults. Behaviors are the hardest thing to change. Elaborate on that a little bit. Um, for people who are just so stubborn and stuck in their ways. <laughs> If the shoe fits, wear it. <laughs> CV. <Very exotic>. Um, <laughs> I love you. Um, yeah, I think a lot of people struggle with this, you know, and then yeah. you get to a place to where you're like in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, 60s, whatever, where you're like, oh, well, this is just my life. This is kind of how it has to be. Right. Which talk is the to saddest those people. thing in the yeah, world. We'll talk to those people in terms of behaviors and, and changing them. Well, I think. All right. So we have these behaviors that ingrained us in us. Right. And they usually serve us to a point. Right. Like my workout routine and very strictness got me so far in my life. It got me very far. It got me a lot of the accomplishments that, you know, we talk about. But then it it became the thing that was holding me back the most. Right. And I think once you hit your 30s, 40s, 50s, you start to realize that you become a little self-aware that like, okay, like. We were talking about this all morning, essentially, right? Like, you know that, and I'm not picking on you in any way, shape, or form, but like, you know that this behavior is the thing that's preventing you from the next level of your life. She's talking to CV, by yes. the way, for those who don't know. <laughs> and like, you know, in every leadership group, every leadership program I've ever gone into, it usually starts with like the intro and it's, this has been serving me my whole life, but I feel like this is the thing that's preventing me, right? And so... Becoming self-aware of that and realizing that this is the programming that you know the most, like you've ingrained this from your parents and it's like 30 X or 40 years or 50 years of you practicing this thing Mm -hmm. that served you this long that got you here, but you know that it's holding you back. Are you willing to make the change and do the work to reverse the psychology in your brain to change that behavior? (sighs) Because you have then the next five to 10 years where you're aware of it. You're aware. We we talked about it, right? We can I can say, like, this is my thing and I'm aware of it. I'm still going to go do the thing again tomorrow. Like, am I going to change? So for me, the thing that got – and I'm, I'm dissecting myself as you're talking. <laughs> yeah, Petri. The dishes. thing that got me so far is my tenacity, right. you know, my go, 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 which now could be the thing – that hinders my growth. That is the thing that's hindering your growth. So now I need to slow, slow, slow. Yes, and watch all of those things that you think you should be doing. Notice how I said should and not could? Mm -hmm. Like self-talk is so important because we beat ourselves up as super humans that can, can do everything. We should be doing everything all the time. But really, if we start talking to ourselves in a way where we could be doing that instead of Mm. should be, we're not negatively speaking to ourselves. And if we don't accomplish that, we are not worth anything, which is what you're actually doing by saying should and not could. Mm. Because your self-worth is in the, like, wrapped into that of the, whatever the external exercise is that you have accomplished that makes you the best version of you that you think, Mm. right? Yeah, I mean, so you whenever see, you're ready, I know, I know. It's, it's like, like so, really yeah. about like when you're just like at the point where you're just like done with your own shit, mm-hmm. like, and it might not happen for everybody, but like you're consciously making that effort and choice every day to remain the same. Yeah, and I do think people, there are there are a ton of people in this world, even in my circle, my family, friends, who are content. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and I struggle with this because. I know people who make fifty, sixty thousand dollars a year, eighty thousand dollars a year, and they're like super comfortable, like they're happy, is what I mean. You know, maybe they want a little bit more and and something, but they they're okay, and they choose to stay where they are. Yeah, they're not wrong for that no. because this is also a battle, right? You know, and like it's a never ending battle, clearly, because like I'm not at your level. But I'm already continuing to just I, I need more, I need more, I need more. You're at that level, and you just need more, need more, need more. 
No, but you I also, don't. I need less. Yeah, but you won't stop, though. Like, no, you, you I'm s- always going to grow, but I don't need more. Correct. That's what I meant. Okay, I, I, I but meant that's different. Exactly what's here. Embracing lifelong growth. Yes. Right? And I do believe that certain people do not need to embrace lifelong growth. No. They're okay with the status quo of where they're at. Mm-hmm. That's just not me. No, it's not me It's either. just not me. Yeah. That's why we're sitting here. Yeah, 100%. And it makes me sad, too, in a way, at times with those people because I don't know if they're making that decision because they're actually happy or if they're just lazy and they are choosing to settle for what is around them because they're actually just scared. Mm. You know, like, I'm really happy in this marriage. Like, are you or are you just afraid to be alone? Like, I I don't I'm OK with making 50K and there's nothing wrong with money and that amount of money. But like. Are you or are you just scared to get fired and actually have to get another job? Like, which which mm. one is it, actually? Like, are you really happy? Do you have, like, joy in your life? Like, do you wake up in the morning and you cannot wait to go to work? Can you not wait to go to work? Yeah. No, I doubt it. I, right, I right, doubt right. that very well, much. Well, again, and, and I'm, I'm, I take ownership of my shit, and I'm listening to you even with the marriage thing, right? It ultimately came down to... and. and you know, my ex and I spoke about this openly and we came to the conclusion that like, I just really didn't want to give up, but I didn't want to really be in that marriage and neither did she. Yeah. Like we really didn't want that. And a lot of people, you know, they, they stay in that and that's fine. Like for whatever the beliefs are, but like, you're really not that happy. No. And that was me. Right. But like I thought I was. But if you weren't in the marriage, does that mean that you failed at something? Wait, if what? If that's were, what I thought. Absolutely. A hundred percent. And that that's not a failure. You had a beautiful relationship with someone right. and you had a beautiful child with that person and then it ended and there's right. nothing fucking wrong with that. And you grew apart. And you shared all these magical moments together mm-hmm. and it just wasn't forever. And there's nothing wrong with that. You might have a healthier, better relationship now. Well, it's, it's crazy because, right? because now, you know. It doesn't matter what relationship I'm I'm in, right? I'm currently in one, but like even with friendships now, my intention is so different because of the experience that I've been able to get mm-hmm. to now apply into this. Like people see me now and they're like, oh my God, you really, really look happy. Like I can see you really, really, really look happy. And I'm like, well, do you know what I had to lose to get right. to get here? Like it wasn't it wasn't easy. Like CV knows better than anybody who sat here watching this for two years now oh. of me going through you know what i was going through and now again i chose to show up every day and give it the best that i could so people didn't see the the struggles or whatever but the people who are really close to me know mm-hmm. you know and and now it's just like all right like there is there's a lot of life left like i'm i'm young i got a lot of You're life just getting left. started really just getting started really? and i think a lot of people out here are just getting started if they make that decision the age doesn't really matter it's it's the mind yeah. You know, but I, I, I know 30 year olds, literally 30 years old. And they're like 97 in the brain. Yeah. And it's sad. I think like my 40th birthday, I was like, I'm just getting started. Like it's it like. I've never felt so good. In my entire life. Like and I might actually start crying right now, but like. I want to give this to other people. That's why I'm here. You know, and like, Mm -hmm. I know what it feels like to not feel good. And like, I don't want to talk about meditation. (laughs) I don't want to, you know, dance around in fucking bikinis. But like, that's how good I feel, you know, and like, it's possible. Like, it is possible to wake up in the morning and like, can't believe your life is real. And that you get to like, create anything that you want and make it a reality. Like, it's like, think about that. Like, Mm -hmm. you could literally do everything. Anything that you want in this entire world. Now, that's a beautiful thing. But also on top of that statement, you can also still battle every day like you said that you I do. do. That amazes me, though, because yeah. you're so happy, but you're also still battling. Oh, absolutely. Talk about that a little bit. So, like, I battle everything that we've talked about every single day. Okay? Like, I still have imposter syndrome. It doesn't have control over me anymore. Okay? It had it. It would debilitate me. It would make me freeze. It would prevent me from executing, right? And because I've framed this now that this isn't about me. I am like a vessel for this change, Mm -hmm. okay? So it's about the impact that I can create. 
I still have the thing. I still have the questions. Right. But I have removed my shit from the equation and I can get through that a lot faster now because of the work that I do on myself. Like it it has gotten like slower and slower and slower and slower and slower. It used to be like I couldn't do that for two weeks. I would procrastinate. I would put it off. I wouldn't do the thing like a post. Jesus fucking Christ. Like a post on Instagram was debilitating to me. Mm. The first bikini photo I ever put out and I had a social media manager at the time. I can't tell you I took 350 photos. I photoshopped the, the image. I blurred my stomach and like it took me about a week and a half to post it. And she had to do it. Okay, now I don't care. Like, I don't care. There's no Photoshop involved. Like, and there's nothing that's changed except my relationship with myself and like how I want to show up. And I'm just moving through this thought. I still have like the thing, like it's still like twitches, but like we don't have time for this anymore. Like we that's don't have. And that's why I was the way I was with you earlier when I was just like, what do you want? Get out of the fucking way. Like it's we're putting ourselves through the the turmoil, you know, and it's just about how much time we're going to allow the turmoil to like debilitate us from getting what we actually want in this life. And there's been a lot of therapy and there's a lot of meditation and there's multiple leadership programs that have attributed to this. But it's just it, it turned into a two week debilitation to a 30 second reel to it's happening in a second and I don't have time for this anymore. And that's it's the power has less power over me now. Mm -hmm. And that's <clears throat> extremely powerful. Thank you. You know, and, and hearing it and also witnessing it. I, I know that what you're saying is true, too. Um, that's why you also get so emotional about it because it's it's groundbreaking shit you know like and, and you've been able to break through and you continue to break through and now you're here to help impact and encourage others um wow i can't Are, believe my life is real already coming up on on time which is incredible um goals talk to me about your i don't do those anymore your big uh well you mentioned something upstairs I, that's pretty I'm, big. i'm calling something in yeah what are you calling in uh, yeah. Fuck you. yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, Sports Illustrated swimsuit cover for next year at age 45. I'm calling that in. That's f fire. I don't know how that's going to happen, but I'll figure it out. So it's bold statement right yeah. there. Yeah. And I love it. You're a little hesitant, though. It scares Which the shit out of me. Normal. Like, listen, like, this scares me. It really scares me. And, and like, I've had to, my life is getting a, a lot more public in this process. And mm. this is something I didn't account for. Right. Right. When I was like, we're going to help as many people as possible. I forgot that people are going to be watching. Yeah. <laughs> like, I thought you were just going to help. They're not yeah, watching. <laughs> yeah. And so that's been also something that I've kind of been learning about, about mm. being a public person a little bit more. And, you know, I do have like, you know, these photos out that are I'm na almost naked in and like I have a lot of body image issues and like have dealt with eating disorders in the past and have been overweight and, you know, things got really dark in that space for me. And so to put this out there now, it's like it's still like palpable for me that I'm mm -hmm. like, you know, but like my intention is to help as many people as possible. And part of that is being more public and getting a larger following of humans that hear the message to to do that. And so whatever I need to deal with myself in order to get that out there, that's what I want to do. And I think SI does a great job highlighting women that are making a lot of positive impact in the world right now, which is why I chose that platform. Mm. Um, they're really focusing on like being the best version of the female of you and it doesn't matter what age that is or what size that is and i really stand behind that and i think that there's a nice that aligns with who i am as a person spoke it to existence and now it's just about like you know I, I think putting yourself out there is obviously step one believing in yourself is something that you already do um but now it's also making this known to the people who need to see this yeah you know and it's obviously starting the outreach so one of my long-term goals is like a, a top 40 under 40 and for me to do that, I have to continue doing the work that I'm doing daily, but also I need to start creating relationships with the people who can actually put me there mm -hmm. because nobody knows what I do, right? Like I have to 
You have to actually embody it all. Yeah, the way. yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'm done taking bruises from you. Um, I'm super grateful for you. Um, I'm grateful for you too. Thank you know, you. I I really value you as a as a person. I take your word very seriously. Um, you're a straight shooter, which is something that I can really relate to. Um, and I receive everything that you have brought into my life. Thank you. And I hope I provide some level of value back Absolutely. to you. Absolutely. I really do. You do. Um, anything that you want to discuss before we close out? Because now we're going to do it a third time. <laughs> what did we, don't dim your light. I think that's the biggest, I think that's what I talked about last time yes. too, was yep, the last, yep. like, do not dim your light no matter what. Like, no matter what the circumstances is. No matter how people like you think people are going to react to you it has nothing to do with you. Mm. It has everything to do with them. And like learning that, learning that like someone else's response to me had nothing to do with me was probably one of the hardest and most important lessons I've ever learned. Mm. Like, especially when you like are on social media, like it is a it is a comment out oh, there. Yeah, yeah. You know what's crazy? I, and I said this too before. I still delete comments. Oh, yeah? I, I have this one stuck in my head because I like, I battled with this clip and then the clip did really well, but I felt that it was a stupid clip. And sure enough, this one guy commented and said, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard in my life. Like your presentation was trash. It doesn't even make sense. Doesn't correlate to life. And that one comment, like killed me and it's stuck with me here. And like, I deleted it, but it's still like not deleted in my head. So now I like constantly check to see like the negative stuff and I like still delete it. Something I'm going to work on. Cause I just want to leave it there too, for people to see, mm -hmm. but also I get embarrassed, you know, it's hard. It's hard putting yourself out there and then like receiving that negative feedback. I don't like it. I have people that destroy me, uh, based on what I look like. I'm anorexic, eat a cheeseburger. I would never want to look like that. This girl's like, why you're promoting anorexia? Why are we, do you think it's healthy to look like that? And I'm like, are mm. you fucking kidding me? Like, first of all, this is showing me that you know nothing about me, right. right? You are judging me based off of this one situation, right? Fuck off. Like, fuck off. And like, I had to stop. Like, when I decide to start outputting some of these tasks that I have, that will be the first one. <laughs> that will be yep, the first yep. one. Good. Like people are ruthless. Like your post wasn't any of those things. Like that was that person's shit because right. they're probably afraid to put stuff online. Like the these people oh, yeah. talking about yeah, my my body that I'm anorexic, like they wish they looked like that. You probably are anorexic and you're dealing with that or and or you're overweight and you can't manage your weight and so therefore you're projecting your like dark shit onto me like this has nothing to do with me mm -hmm. right and like none of the anything has anything to do with either of us it has to do with the person have you ever sat in like um an exercise where people like yell at you about like your insecurities or what they like the holes that you see Oh my God. Okay. No. This is a super intense exercise where you like sit in like a U shape and each person like sits in the U like here and the group collaboratively, collaboratively starts fucking screaming at you all at the same time about like, you are fucking a loser. You're insecure. You think Do you're the best. You? Yeah. They know you and they shred you. All right. And you're, you sit there for like five whole minutes and you receive all of this negative stuff, all of this negative stuff, and you feedback loops, feedback arcs is what they're called. Okay. Feedback what? Feedback arcs. Arcs? Arcs. Okay. okay. So you do that like a couple times. It's <clears throat> awful. Yeah. That Everyone rough. cries. <clears throat> and if you don't, you're made of stone, right? It, what it does is it teaches you that like what that person's actually saying to you about you is what their issue is. And as you go through and do like the sixth one, like I was laughing at the last one because I was like, this has nothing to do with me. Like you're insecure about yourself. I'm good. Like, So are they actually screaming their insecurities at you? No, they're screaming what they see in you as like a whole. So the, the exercise is for them to like pinpoint what's wrong with you yeah. and then yell at you. 
and they tell you that you're doing this because you're a friend and you're like trying to help them like level up. But it is an exercise. So eventually what happens is you realize that like that feedback has nothing to do with me. Mm. That has everything to do with the person that's yelling at me and I'm good and fuck off. That's powerful. It is so insanely powerful wow. and like terrifying at the same time. Yeah. I would do one with you. <laughs> I'm know. good. Oh, so you, you can good. watch me then. We can record it on a platform here. Because <laughs> that's the whole point. Like, So true. I'm good. Yeah. Um, let everybody know where they can connect with you if they're not already connected to you. Diamandia.com, at Diamandia, no O's, only A's, spelled like that. I don't, oh, sorry. Spelled like that. Nice. Look, you got it one shot. Nice and clear. Um, I think we also have a code, right, that we set up last time that we didn't announce. Yeah, what is that code? I think it's like no snooze 20. Let's go with that. Yeah, if not, I'll just make it right yeah, now. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> no snooze 20 for 20% off. Yes. Uh, Diamandia Body Gua Sha. And any product on the, uh, yeah, on the site, right? Yeah, which we're gonna be. I'm gonna be launching another product. Awesome, let's go. I'm 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 proud to sit across from you. Thank proud you. Proud to know you. I proud to have you in my in my circle. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming on, uh, guys. As always, you can shop the latest merch at nosnewshop.com. Why'd you jump like that, CV? Come on, man. <laughs> I I said that and you jumped. Go ahead. You got to give people why you jumped. No, I didn't. What? I switched the camera back. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Um, <laughs> Nosnewshop.com for, for, <laughs> for the latest merch. Um, and guys, we're very grateful for you. Thank you uh, for sharing the show. Whether you found value, whether we entertained you, whether we made you laugh, whether we made you cry, give us a share. Send Ooh. it to a friend. Can I also, if you, this is my second episode and uh, we're going to be doing another one, obviously. Mm -hmm. So like if you guys want more information on anything specific that I talked about, you know, we've talked about a lot of broad range yep. topics in the past two episodes, like, and you want more of X, Y, and Z, put it in the comments in either Instagram posts or whatever, just feedback. If you want me to speak more specifically about certain topics, we want that feedback for sure. Absolutely. Okay. And we'll run it back for a third time. And as always, until next time, stop snoozing. Get up and get after it. I yeah. Mean, I, I really need to go rest. Huh? I got to meditate. Fuck, I got to meditate. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's another epi in the books. You can follow us on Instagram at no Snooze Podcast and leave us a five-star review wherever you listen to us. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze. Shop the latest merch at nosnooshop.com. Come on.